Hey guys, what is going on? I am here with the Redmi K20 Pro, uh, 8 gig of RAM, 128 gig version of the Snapdragon 855. So a few days ago, I made an unboxing video of this phone, and ever since I've gotten so many questions, and even when I wrote a comment on other reviewers' videos on this phone, I just wrote, I have this phone, and, there, and I got comments as well asking me questions like, how is it? Is it good? Now I'm going to get two things out of the way. Like, the two main questions I've gotten is, is this global? And the answer is no. This is not 100% global. And I say not 100% because you can make this sort of global. So you can get the Redmi K20 Pro. This one is from AliExpress from a seller called Me Global Store. Now, this seller, if you want, he opens the phone up, installs their global version of the ROM which they take they take the Chinese ROM and all they do is add multiple languages and OTA now I don't know if they add anything else behind my back but that ROM seemed fine apart from the fact that it didn't pass safety net and a, and a few other things I won't get into so I did end up installing Xiaomi.eu which is a website where you can install Pure MIUI, it's not official Xiaomi ROMs, but these developers do base their ROMs off of the latest builds and no bloatware, it's all pure Xiaomi, so you can download the ROM no problem. And I'm going to show you in the settings right here and what I mean. So if I go here, it shows Xiaomi.eu beta, so again this isn't official and just because it's a beta, it doesn't mean that it's it's unstable. Like. Sure, there may be a few unstable ROMs that come out here and there, but, but most of the time it's going to be fine. If you want to do the same thing and buy it from the same seller I did, then you have two options. You can stick with the ROM they provide if it doesn't bother you. I mean, it should not It should be alright. It's a trusted seller. They've been around for years, and they're pretty well known. People even made reviews about them on other websites like Reddit. But if you want the absolute purest MIUI possible, then I would recommend flashing Xiaomi.eu. And if you don't know how, I'd be more than happy to help you by if you join my Discord server, the link is in the description, and I'll be more than happy to help. I'm not gonna make a whole video because there are certain steps that I'm not sure about. I need to like I can only help in real time. I don't cause I don't wanna be responsible for for anyone messing up their device. So now that we got that part of the way, how is this as an overall phone? Well let's take a look. Let's take a look at this black. Now this carbon black looks great, but I only wish I could see more carbon. Maybe you can see it more in the camera, but I just wish it was a tiny bit more visible. But other than that, I love this color. I didn't get red or blue, that's just too much for me. I love black phones and black phones only. Now what I also love is we have these accents. We have the red ring around the camera over here and this red power button. And we do get autos on display, which is nice. And the fingerprint scanner is also pretty good. Let's try again. So as you can see, it's pretty quick. And we also have face unlock. Which is pretty fun to use as well. And the battery is 4000 milliamp hours. And I've tested this for a few days. I haven't gotten the chance to test it properly. Because I haven't gotten all the way down to zero to test screen on time. But usage has been well. It's been really good. I really have no complaints about the battery you're gonna be fine with it. And I'm a heavy user, so that's saying a lot. Now the screen is a 6.39 AMOLED display from Samsung apparently. And even though I love the screen as well, it's not the best AMOLED, but it's up there. It is up there with with the best AMOLED. Um, I don't know, it's just something about the screen. It just, it, I think it's just me that I, I'm just used to better AMOLED, like the Note 9, uh, OnePlus 7 Pro, phones, phones like that, I've just seen I've just used so many phones, but I, but this is in no way a bad screen. This screen is pretty great. It's just not the best AMOLED you could possibly get. And that's perfectly fine. This phone is pretty cheap. And what I also love is that even though this is a 6.3 inch display, this phone feels pretty compact compared to the OnePlus 7 Pro and the Note 9. So I like the size of the phone and the screen itself. But I still prefer my OnePlus 7 Pro, which is massive compared to the Redmi K20 Pro. But a lot of people complain about the size and the weight. And this is a big and heavy phone. So I understand why. 
but the size for most people is gonna be great no problem at all now the the vibrator is also a big letdown like I get this isn't an expensive phone but when I'm typing I like to have haptic feedback when I'm typing and it just uh, it is not there like the quality it's just not the best so the haptic engine was just not a big priority with this phone I want this let me see if you, I can let you hear it I don't know if you heard that, but I put the phone next to the microphone. Now, this is a very snappy phone. Remember, this is the 8GB of RAM version, but I'm pretty sure the 6GB of RAM is also going to be pretty good as well. So let's do a quick speed test. And if you didn't notice, I'm using a theming app. This is rooted. So it is... That's the first time I ever launched 9 gig. So But the gestures are nice. The gestures are are just like almost just like OnePlus. And uh, the UI is good. If we're gonna put a launcher on this, then I think it's just perfect. Uh, what I don't like is on me UI, it's a bit finicky. Like I'm used to going back by swiping from this side, but it just closes the whole app. So to go back you actually have to swipe from the left like that. But if you swipe right it doesn't go forward, so I don't know what we did with that. I don't know why this could make it go back from here, from like every other phone. Now this phone has the Snapdragon 855, so as you can imagine, gameplay is gonna be more or less the same as any other phone with this chipset. So performance is not gonna be an issue at all. I haven't done any heavy gaming on this phone yet. So I can't tell you right now how the far how the throttling is gonna be like, but if we can judge this based off of previous sh Xiaomi devices, the Mi 8 um, had also had the 845, but but it performed less good than other phones of that chipset because of that throttling that wasn't as good as other f phones. So I don't know if it's the same here. Probably is, maybe not. But the point is. You're gonna be able to game on this phone, no problem. Even if the throttling is slightly worse, you're still gonna be able to play games on here, no problem. I don't even need to show you. Now, camera. A lot of people have been asking about the camera, now, and I think the camera is really good. Let's go through the options we have here. We have a ultra wide, regular, and a telephoto, which, in many people's opinion, is the perfect combination for a camera setup on a smartphone. Now let's see what we have here. If you want a 48 megapixel sensor, you have to select it manually. And we do have a portrait mode, which works like any other phone. We have a night mode, panorama, and a pro. The night mode I haven't really tried yet, but I did take a few photos with this phone and video just to give you a quick look at what the camera is capable of. second on the Redmi K20 Pro so as you can see colors are right now they're both a bit oversaturated I think right now I got a tiny bit better and but overall I really like the video on this phone I just I love 4k 60 frames per second and it's just so convenient to have it on your smartphone but it is point and shoot without having to worry about focusing you get super high quality video on your phone and the, the K20 Pro does a great job with it.
Now this is front facing video on the Redmi K20 Pro and unfortunately we were limited to 1080p at 30 frames per second. Now for me this isn't a deal breaker, like, I don't really mind. This is gonna be good enough for most people. Like I don't think anyone needs 4K or 2K vid front facing video but as you can see this also looks nice. Um, not as nice as the rear facing camera but I can live with it. Alright, so that is my quick overview on the Redmi K20 Pro. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments or feel free to join my Discord server. Now, should you get this phone? Yes, absolutely. You should get this phone. Or if you want to wait for the official global version, wait for the Mi 9T Pro. But if you don't care if it's Chinese or if you don't care if it's a vendor ROM, then I'd say go ahead and get this one already. I don't think everyone needs to wait for the global version. Some people don't mind if it's Chinese because... The only difference is that there are a few missing bands and I don't only get Chinese and English. But I personally don't need the bands. The ones that come with the Chinese phone are is perfectly fine for me. But of course it depends on your carrier and where you live. So be sure to check that out, which bands are right for you. But other than that, uh, great phone, great build quality, great performance, great screen. Um, great pop-up camera, I just love the sound makes it, the effects and the LED. I love that this, this phone isn't ashamed of having a pop-up camera. And I personally like these cameras. I think they're really cool. Durability is, does not need to be a concern. These things can last for years. Um, I have a video up. I made a one year later review on my, with my Vivo Nexus, which is one of the first phones to have a pop-up camera. And it still functions just fine. So I know pop-up cameras aren't the solution to the future. But I'm just going to enjoy them while they're here. So thank you so much for watching guys. And I'll see you in the next review. Peace out.